Did you know you can recreate the infrared effect in seconds using only Lightroom? Let me show you how it's done. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. First, expand the basic panel. Right here, you want to go under the profiles and click on browse. Here, you do get a bunch of different categories and we want to head into the artistic one. Here, choose artistic free. At first, this will give us an autumn look, but using the amount slider, we can push it up and thus make the foliage look like it was shot on an infrared film. Once that is done, hit close. This is already looking pretty good, but from this point on, there are a few things we can tweak to make this effect even stronger and get closer to the infrared look. First, we can adjust the colors further by playing around with the white balance settings. Bringing the temperature down will reduce the infrared effect, while bringing it up will make it stronger. The same goes for the tint. However, bringing the tint up will make it weaker, while bringing the tint down into the green range will make this effect stronger. So I would say we can bring down the tint just a little bit, making the colors a little more intense this way, and that is looking pretty good. The next step for us to affect the colors would be vibrance and saturation, which is quite obvious. Bringing up the vibrance and the saturation will make the colors more intense. So to make this effect pop, I want to really bring up the vibrance and that's about it. To further improve the infrared effect, we want to head out of the basic panel and go into the color mixer. Looking at this image, you would think to adjust the foliage further, you want to target the red and orange tones. However, originally the foliage was green and that's the reason we have to work with the green and the yellow slider for this. You see, pushing up the red saturation won't change the foliage at all, while bringing up the green saturation will make it way more intense. This is another thing to keep in mind when working in the color mixer tab. And what I want to do here is I want to slightly bring down the orange saturation, which will mainly affect the areas next to the road. I think they don't need that much saturation. I also want to slightly bring down the yellow saturation to make this a little more balanced. And then I'm going to bring up the green saturation to get those intense infrared colors. All right, that's looking nice. We can also make use of the luminance tab again to directly affect those infrared colors we want to target yellow and green. In this case, I do want to make the leaves a little brighter. So we want to bring up the green luminance. As you can see, we'll make all the original green color tones of the image brighter. So that's looking like a good spot right there. And of course, you can further adjust the hue of each color tone and thus we can give the foliage a more pinkish look if you're aiming for that very popular infrared style. However, I think for this image, it's a bit too much. So I want to reset the green hue. One more point where we can affect the infrared effect is the calibration tool. So what I think works pretty well here is to play around with the blue primary hue and saturation. In this case, I want to start by bringing up the saturation some more, again, to make the colors more intense. And then usually for my images, I like to bring down the blue primary hue. However, this does look kind of weird with this infrared effect. So instead of bringing it down, I want to bring it up. And I think this will give this image a way more pleasing look. Keep in mind, I'm only using very, very tiny amounts here because this is quite a powerful setting. Now, knowing all this, you can create some pretty nice looking artificial infrared images using just Lightroom. However, at this point, we are not done because we still need to do some basic adjustments and some masking. So let's do that. I want to head back into the basic panel and I want to give this whole image a darker look. So let's bring down the exposure making this forest look way more gloomy like this. And I'm also going to bring down the shadows, introducing more contrast. And for further contrast, I'm bringing up the whites. Then to prevent those very dark underexposed areas, I'm going to bring up the blacks slightly just to push them out of the underexposure. Looking good so far, I want to add a bit of texture. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity which will add some very nice softness to this image. And I'm also going to add 
dehaze, which will give us some more contrast. And that's about it for the basic adjustments. Looks pretty good, but we are still not done. We want to do the masking. So let's head into the masking panel. And for this image, I do have some kind of vignetting effect in mind with the center part being the most important area where I want the figure to look first. So I'm going to use a linear gradient covering the top part of the image. And I'm going to simply bring down the exposure, making this area darker. Just a little bit is enough. I want to do the same thing for the foreground. So let's use a linear gradient right here. However, I don't want to affect those infrared colors. So what I'm doing with this mask is to click on it, say subtract, choose color range, and then let me deactivate the overlay. I am going to click somewhere in those foliage colors right about here. And this will subtract the leaves lying on the street from this mask. So what we can do then is to again, just bring down the exposure without affecting those infrared colors. That looks great. I do want to add another linear gradient. However, I'm going to create a smaller one just for the very near foreground here. And again, bring down the exposure for a stronger vignetting effect. Perfect. Now let's work on the center for a moment. I'm going to use a radial gradient targeting this bright area right here. And I'm going to slightly bring up the exposure. And I'm also brightening up the shadows a bit and maybe the whites. All right. And I'm going to use another radial gradient for the street right about here. Cause in this area, I do want to add some clarity. I think this will look pretty good with the street right there. And actually let's create one more mask using the object selection, just roughly painting over the street like this. Need to add another object for the border. Well, this didn't work, so let's just use the brush. Okay, and in here, I'm simply going to raise the contrast, giving that road leading into the forest some more punch. For the same effect, also bring down the shadows and the blacks. All right, that looks great, but that's it for the masking. And I think here we have the finished image with the infrared effect applied. And as you saw, this was very, very easy thanks to that artistic free profile. So let me know what you think about this effect. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.